Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Chelsea is alarmed by Adam's inebriated confession, Lily chooses Billy over Devon. The young and the restless spoilers for Thursday, July 11th indicate that Billy Abbott will visit Crimson Lights for a short while with Johnny Abbott, Katie Abbott, and Victoria Newman before Chelsea Lawson shows up in the area. Before Billy joins Chelsea on the patio, Johnny will extend his best wishes to Connor Newman and Chelsea. Billy will observe that Chelsea appears uneasy, but he'll presume that given everything that's happened with Connor, she was just shaken up by seeing Johnny. Billy and Chelsea will run across Adam Newman and Sally Spectra at Society when they go there for lunch. Sally will inquire as to Billy's intended order after Chelsea and Billy arrive at their table. Adam will acknowledge that he didn't think they knew each other so well, and Billy will affirm that he's ordering empanadas. Sally will joke that there's no reason to be envious after revealing that they spoke briefly about Connor when Adam and Chelsea were away. When the conversation turns to the trip to Baltimore, Sally will be hoping that Chelsea and Adam managed to divert their attention while they wait for information from Connor. That helped, because Adam will admit that they were blackout drunk the previous evening. Chelsea will shoot Adam a cold look and then swiftly turn the story around by saying he's exaggerating. Chelsea will receive a call from Connor's facility after pretending that they only had a few beers, before calling it a night. Adam and Chelsea will rejoice when good news regarding Connor's turning point is revealed. Billy and Sally will act as though it's a good thing since Connor needs his parents to stand together, even though they will realize how much this whole experience has bonded Chelsea and Adam. Chelsea will chastise Adam for his earlier drunken remark after they go to his house to have a video conversation with Connor. Adam will contend that their situation will improve the more information they can exchange without acknowledging the cheating. Adam will calm Chelsea down because disclosing the truth about their one-time error will not benefit them in any way, even if she would become agitated due to the lies and guilt. In the YNR show airing on Thursday, Connor will appear much more composed and discuss his significant discovery during a video chat. Lily Winters, Crystal Khalil, will speak with Devin Hamilton Winters, Brighton James, alone at Chancellor Winters, which will irritate him because she won't commit to either side after the demerger. Devin will make an effort to persuade Lily to adhere to their initial plan, which called for her to start her own family company. Lily, however, will find it difficult to abandon what she accomplished at Chancellor and turn on Jill Abbott, Jess Walton. As he brings Nate Hastings, Sean Dominic, up to speed, Devin won't seem hopeful once Lily requests for more time and departs. Devin would even imply that they might need to get ready for Winter's life without Lily. Billy will put pressure on Lily to decide whether to stay at Chancellor or leave for Winters once they run into each other at Society later. At some point, Lily will come to understand Billy's goal, and they will make plans to work together to proceed. Billy will forecast that they will succeed and reassure Lily that she won't regret it. Victoria, Katie, and Johnny will run across Claire Grace, Haley Aaron, and Harrison Abbott, Redding Munsell, in the park. Katie will pass and keep ignoring Claire, even though Johnny will accompany Harrison and Claire on their worm hunt. Victoria will seem shocked that her mother might be prepared to do something for just the two of them when she suggests taking a trip with Katie. Katie will say that she assumed Victoria would be too preoccupied with her first kid, Claire. When it's time for ice cream, Johnny will confront Katie for her grumpiness. Harrison will give Katie some flowers and emphasize how wonderful Claire is in the hopes that Katie will eventually warm up to her sister and join in on the fun. We were no strangers to the parallels. I mean, it would have been hard to miss them. These are two impetuous boys from very privileged backgrounds who firmly believe that they are capable of doing everything, even better than anybody else, and that nothing is beyond their reach. However, it wasn't until this week's Young and the Restless episodes that we finally understood that Kyle was the new Billy Abbott. It's strange since Billy is still the same old haughty and conceited guy he always has been, yes, even if he helped Chelsea through her Connor-related anxieties. Thus, we are unsure about the soap opera's intended audience. If it were a person, we would say that person belongs to a certain type of rich brats who get upset if five minutes go by without receiving a pat on the back. However, narratively speaking, 
yes, that's where we're stuck. Uncle Billy and Kyle argued over their share of a pie big enough to feed a planet, as we have already seen. They have also never stopped bragging about how intelligent, strong, and deserving they are. However, what's the big deal? Isn't the show just rehashing Billy's famous I'll show you tantrum when Jabot wasn't the largest of the big kahunas? We don't give a damn if Kyle has a corner office the size of our house now, or if he had one back then. Witnessing a new Victor Newman, someone who starts from nothing and succeeds, would be more inspiring and aspirational. Someone who has to struggle through every obstacle. Someone without a silver spoon in his mouth from birth. We could agree on that. This is simply another poor little privileged guy throwing a tantrum and ignoring the world at his feet. Heck, Young and Restless didn't even require Kyle to demonstrate his mettle by founding his own business with the money he had built up. He decided to make a fool of his parents by taking advantage of Victor's large wealth. Whoa. How clever. Rich guy allows even richer guy to give him a business with change he found in his couch cushions. Positively, the stakes are personal, at least in this corporate tale. It is Kyle's desire to harm Jack and Diane. While this is going on, Victor is enjoying it immensely since Kyle is far too arrogant and conceited to realize that his employment will hurt the Black Knight's rival rather than being the most brilliant businessman this side of a Monopoly board. In the end, we hope that Glissade fails poorly and forces Kyle to acknowledge that he probably wouldn't handle a piggy bank well. He returns with a crawl to his parents, who respond, Yeah, dummy, we tried to shield you from that fact. Now, we are unable to rehire you. We would appear foolish. It goes without saying that Victor would have blackballed Kyle in the incredibly bustling business sector of Genoa City. Even though Sharon was prepared to work with her ex-husband, who had led her to believe her baby was dead, she won't even take him on at Cassidy first. She will, however, allow him to take orders at Crimson Lights. That's right, Kyle turns into a nobody overnight. Perhaps at that point, both he and we would discover his true nature and whether it consists of more than just millionaire DNA and a large gold chip on his shoulder. Perhaps instead of yelling, he will just shut up and listen, make a move instead of sulking, and show appreciation instead of making demands. We might then be interested in what happens to him. With Johnny Abbott, Paxton Mishkind, and Katie Abbott, Sienna Mercury, having returned from boarding school, Victoria is eager for them to bond with Claire Grace, Haley Aaron. Well, things haven't exactly gone smoothly with the plan so far. Claire's initial interactions with her new siblings, Johnny and Katie, were filled with awkwardness and tension. Johnny isn't exactly thrilled about having a new big sister, but he's intrigued by Claire and has been encouraging Katie to give her a chance. On the other hand, Katie was so distrustful of Claire that she even tried to send her off to live with the Abbots. It's evident that Katie is struggling to accept Claire as a true family member. There was a glimmer of hope when Victor Newman, Eric Braden, shared his past experiences at the orphanage with Katie, though. Victor attempted to assist Katie in understanding the experience of a solitary childhood and encouraged her to ensure Claire feels included.